What's it called? Na non NATO Ma status. No, no, no. Uh. Major non NATO ally. Oh, wow. Yeah, don't miss the word major. Major non NATO, NATO ally. ally. Okay, hold that thought for just one second because it was just about a month and change ago, about maybe five, six weeks, General Francis of Gola died in that fiery, tragic helicopter crash. And then he's been replaced by General Kairiri. Yes. Well, how's the transition going? Number one, I think uh, I worked with General Ogola uh, as a vice CDF. You knew him well? Yes. I mean, when I became the Minister for Defense, he was the Vice Chief of Defense Forces. So I worked with him for a period of about eight months. And then as our Chief of Defense Forces. He was a very smart general mm. with a lot of humility, down to earth, Listens and, and there was a lot of excitement when he became the chief of defense forces. None who believes in equity. But he died and he became the first chief of defense forces to die in office since independence. Mm. We took it, uh, we had no choice. I mean, that's how life is. So we buried him through uh, the military rituals. We did ours at the Olympic Sports Stadium with all the colors, the 19-gun salute. Given, give, we gave him a very decent burial. We miss him. But uh, I am sure, uh, and, and we did the transition in accordance with the law. And now we have leadership led by another smart, competent uh, general, General Kahariri. General Kahariri is from the Navy. General Ogola uh, was from the Air Force. And uh, the military works in such a way that uh, the transition happens within the leadership. But the policy and the doctrine remains. Mm. So we are implementing and we are working on what General Ogola left us with. Our main function is to make sure that we secure our borders. The sovereignty and territorial integrity of our country is the main mandate of Kenya Defense Forces. Again, uh, when we are called upon to help uh, the civil authority, like now in the floods, during the drought, during the El Nino, in the North Rift, where we seek the approval of parliament and uh, we work with the other security agencies under their leadership, you know, like the, the, the North Rift, the command is, for the, is with the National Police Service. So I'm sure all of us, uh, the new leadership, General Kahariri, the other generals at the defense headquarters, we still have the motto of General Ogola, which was uh, one force, one mission. One force, one mission. Yes. But was it at the same time, it begs the question, the equipment that you all use, let's face it, it's aged. It's old equipment, the helicopters, the planes, everything is old, it's you know, 40, 50 years old. I mean, is, is that right? No, 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 I think, uh, 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 let me make it, uh, we have a mix of equipment. And the age of an equipment, does not count much if that equipment gets the right service and the right spare parts. We have a very robust men and women at the Kenya Air Force, the way we have at the, our artillery, the way we have at our infantry school, who their day-to-day -day work is to make sure that our equipment, all sorts of equipment, light, heavy, mechanized, uh, serviced and are up to the date. General Ogola, the aircraft he used, I used it a number of times. You? Yes, yes, a number of times, I think more than 15 times. Uh, Professor Kindiki used it, the Inspector General of Police used it, mainly that after we used it when we were going to operation areas. It's a very unique uh, machine that can even fly at night. It's an operational logistic helicopter that uh, our troops use in very difficult uh, terrain and uh, insecure areas. So it was a wake-up call. 
we uh, our investigation and inquiry is going on uh, done by a very competent team of uh, air force and other officers from other services we are engaging uh, and upscale that up to the manufacturer bell of the u.s uh, because they also have an interest and i can tell you uh, without any contradiction that uh, as the commander in chief and the president has promised the country we will avail a very detailed report how soon you know now because now it's outside uh, our country we our team are now in the u.s they have gone with all the parts and once uh, all those information are collected collated a recommendation an observation is given to us we will tell the country was it mechanical was it uh, anything else mm. yes i mean the death of uh, general ogola like and the other officers may their soul rest in peace uh, that crash we will the defense council will receive it and the commander in chief will receive and the the kenyan taxpayers will fund our military heavily will have an answers and the family and friends of General Ogola yeah. and the other uh, officers and service. Right. Waziri, you just mentioned that you flew in that same helicopter. Many times. There were, there were five. And even now, I'm, even now I'm flying. Now you're flying. Yeah, if to, yeah tomorrow if I get uh, an, uh, an opportunity to go to uh, any of our remote areas within the border, in Boni, yeah. in North Rift, or even across the border, I will fly it. Okay. But because we have got very competent uh, uh, technicians, we have got very competent uh, pilots, and uh, yeah, but there were five mishaps. I think in 2022, 23, five of them: Wajir, Garissa, Lamu, North Rift. There were five mishaps, and you no, 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 one no, 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 helicopters. No, 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 and those are those are different helicopters. It's not the same. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah, it's not the same. The the one that we had a problem during the Elino in Wajir. That helicopter was Puma. Okay. Uh, the one we had in Boni was the uh, same aircraft, same machine, the Huey, and it was coming from operation in Somalia. The one we had in Gong is our small uh, Phoenix uh, helicopters uh, used for operations. Let me, let me just bring to your attention on the country. The helicopter in which the Iranian president died and uh, the foreign minister and everybody is the same helicopter. The same one. The same one. The same one. It's the it's bell from the U.S. with wow. the two propellers. So we and, and, and we are we are looking at uh, all our air assets going forward. I agree with you. We we had uh, the frequency. Mm of uh, incidents in the last two years was a bit very high. Yeah. I must tell the country. Yeah. And that's why at the defense headquarters, we, had, we have tasked the Air Force commander to do for us an evaluation of all our air assets so that when that one is done, do we need to buy more uh, uh, helicopters? What do we do about servicing? What do we do about training of our, help, uh, of our pilots? Uh, it's part of an ongoing uh, thing. And I think uh, the Defense Council will uh, uh, deal with that matter. Yeah. And the Commander in Chief will give us the guidance. But speaking of which, you just got 16 new helicopters. We hear from the US. Not we hear. Huh. We have 16 new helicopters from the US. Are Dif they 50 years old? We, we, we will not pick 50 years old helicopters. Before we, we get helicopters, our technical team do an assessment. Mm. But we are getting 16 new different helicopters to boost our air assets, to boost the capability of uh, Kenya Defense Forces, to protect our airspace, to carry our soldiers in op during operations, and also for our engagement in the war against Al-Shabaab in Somalia, because we have close to 4,000 plus troops serving under ATMIS. Uh, we are also getting from the U.S. about 150 M, uh, M double, uh, uh, triple, triple one seven uh, armored vehicles. 
150. 150. Okay. Mm. We are getting a lot of other assets for our special forces from their body armor to Google, uh, night vision Google to their own specific uh, anti uh, IED uh, vehicles. So our, our, our engagement with the US, unlike many other countries, is historical. We have a very long history with the US between their, their defense forces, their MOD, their DOD, Pentagon, and ourselves. And we work with the US in five frontiers. Number one, you have seen from cadet to our top leadership. We have a robust program with the US in training our top leadership. You saw last, uh, two weeks ago before we went to the US, our first three cadets are going to three of the top uh, US military academies. One going to the Naval, you know, uh, Naval Academy, one going to the best Air Force Academy, another one going to the Land uh, Academy. Our top, from colonel to brigadiers, they go to, and if you go to, if you, if you, if you go to our defense headquarters, and if you look at the names of our, our brigadiers and generals, mm. the initials, the state which schools and academies, military academies have gone. So we have a very robust training program with the US. Two, we do joint operations with them. The same Batuk you're talking about mm. in Laikipia. About a month ago, we had 16 countries, including US, UK, uh, special forces from Somalia, Rwanda, Burundi, doing uh, an operation. So we do operation and exercises with the US. The US plays a very big role in helping us build the capacity of our institutions. And I'll just give you three examples. One, uh, I think in about a month's time, the president is going to open the only institution of its kind in our region called counterterrorism, counterinsurgency, stabilization center, funded by the US and the Kenya government and the UK government. In our National Defense College, mm. a new center for strategic studies is being now built by the US to the tune of about $10 million. If you go to Manda, where now we have signed the US to invest close to $60 million in expanding the airfield, the runway, from 1.8 kilometers it is now, mm. to about 3.8 kilometers. That will help even us bring some of our air assets from Laikipi Air Base. Because that kind of runway, we only have, for, exclusive for the military, we only have it in Laikipi Air Base. So as a country, we should not have all our assets in one Air Base. Strategically. Mm. So Manda will do a lot. Manda will help us surveil the whole of Western Indian Ocean, working with the US, with the many hangars. We are now doing it with the US in that base. Because of its proximity to Somalia and to the war against Al Shabaab, we work with the US and our other partners, Europeans, in making sure that Kenya is safe, the region is safe. We are living, we are living in a very volatile, a region with a lot of security challenges. Yeah, and Manda was attacked by Al-Shabaab a few years in, ago, remember? In, in uh, 2020, remember? January. Yes. But let them try now. Hmm? Let them try now. It's not the Manda of 2020. It's not the Manda. Yeah. The kind of investment, the kind of security investment both us and the U.S. have made. And, and every morning we, is, is a base that we use for even surveillance and to make sure the country is safe. It's next to Bonnie Forest. Correct. It's right yes. there. And that's why you have seen uh, the investment that we have put to secure the country since President Ruto came to power. And I really want to thank my colleague, Professor Kindiki, the other security apparatus, the National Intelligence Service, all of us together working in a multi-agency. Our primary duty is to make sure that we destroy the infrastructure of Al-Shabaab inside Somalia and we secure them from entering our country. Mm. So that's why you see Boney Forest. I mean, used to, have a, used to have the news every night. Every other night, correct. Yes, Kenyans killed, yeah. some slaughtered. Mm. But um, we have made sure that from our security forces, our equipment and the best of our best, the special forces and our assets are all in Boney Forest and in Mandabis. Mm. Manda Major non-NATO ally. Yes. What does that mean? 
major non-NATO ally is a program that once you, is, is, is a US-led thing, that because of the relationship between the Kenya Defense Forces and the US Pentagon, mm -hmm. there was a feeling by the US that we must elevate Kenya to another level. And we have now, we are now the fourth country in Africa to be designated a major non-NATO ally. Who are the other three? The other three are not in the sub-Saharan Africa. So we are the first country in sub-Saharan Africa to be designated a major non-NATO ally. The other three are Egypt, Morocco, and Tunisia, mm. mostly in the north mm. part of Africa. Mm. Why Kenya? Yeah. Why Kenya? Why was Kenya picked? Number one is because of our robust relationship. But more so, Kenya is an anchor state in our region. Kenya and the U.S. have a very strong relationship to make sure that we secure our own country and we secure the region and face the various challenges that uh, we have in our country. You know, Al-Shabaab in Somalia, all our neighborhood, uh, both the Horn of Africa and the East and Central Africa, DRC. What do we gain by being a major non-NATO ally? Yeah. Number one, for the first time, we will have preference over other countries who are not members of uh, NATO, who are not members of NATO allies in terms of acquisition of uh, uh, equipment. If today we apply to get certain equipment from the US, we will be given first priority. The excess defense article that the US sometimes share with their allies, like the 150 uh, armored vehicles, we will get first hand more than any other uh, country. The training opportunities and the support they give us in uh, building our institutions will go tenfold. And what do we give back in, in return? There's something, we have to give something back. It's, it's, no, not, no, it's I never think, free. No, no, no. There's no free lunches. No, no, no. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, that's what I tell when ambassadors invite me for lunch. <laughs> before, before anything else, I ask them, what is this lunch for? Because there's no free lunch. I agree with you. But uh, the U.S. has interest in global security, okay? And more so in stabilizing regions, whether it's in Africa, in the Middle East, in Asia, in Latin America. And Kenya is one of the countries that they, uh, the U.S. feel strategically in terms of location, in terms of its army, in terms of a government that is free, democratic, the rule of law, that respects international uh, order. Mm. Kenya fits in that bill. And that's why Kenya was picked. So, for, for example, the, the biggest base in Africa for the U.S. is in Djibouti. Yeah. The next base, second biggest, is in Manda. So in another 20 years, Manda might be the biggest uh, U.S. base in Africa. And Djibouti is as big as the province, you know. And, and, and it will help us, uh, our collaboration. We share intelligence. We work together on the war against terror. We, 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 we train together. We do uh, exercises together. They give us uh, equipment and we buy from them some. And that helps build the capability of Kenya Defense Forces. To have, uh, and it's not only the U.S. If you go to our institutions, for example, the only institute in the region, uh, the, uh, the Peace, International Peace Training Center in Karen, more than 15 of uh, our European Union partners support our institutions. From counter IUD training center in Embakasi, where the German government has heavily invested, that's why the chancellor, when he came, he went to Embakasi. Mm. 
Uh, so we do a lot. We do work with the European yeah. Union countries on the what, on the well, on the Wazir, Western Western Mar maritime security. Was it is there's always a cost to it, and I want to talk about that more yes. in a little short while. There's always a catch. There's nothing for free. You know that. I want to talk about that, and also floods. The recent floods. How come KDF wasn't as involved as it should have been? And banditry in the country. Come on, man. People floods. Are people are living in floods. Where were you living? Come on. Well, the ones even who are removing uh, you citizens. You went See, evacuating people no, in no, helicopters? No. Yeah, yeah, when they were, yeah, yeah. You know, our support. Hold the thought. Hold the thought. Even now protecting the riparian. Uh, is, is Haiti your docket noise? No, no. Uh, Haiti you. is uh, my is a docket of Professor Kindik. <laughs> You're lucky. Don't ask me questions on Haiti. You're lucky. <laughs> but I, I, can, I can tell you for one thing. Hold on. We'll talk I about will. that in I a will. short while. <laughs> Defense Cabinet Secretary Aidan Dwale. Talk about everything. And we need to hear your comments and thoughts and questions. Is Kenya the blue-eyed boy of the West right now? Seems like it.